Once upon a time, in the small Italian town of Bologna Salami, Hey, buongiorno! Hey, what are you doing? There lived a lonely toy maker named Gelato. Just because I talk to toys doesn't make me lonely. Besides, I'm not ducks! <laughs> and his assistant, Cricket. I am not a cricket! His assistant named Cricket. I am a caterpillar! Well, that is only half true. Kind and honest Gelato was never married, so he had no children he could call his own. I call this one. Uh, that's not a child. Oh. His three beloved brothers were mysteriously lost at sea while delivering meatballs to the small island of Boyardee. <laughs> So Gelato poured all of his loneliness and love into the toys he carved for the joy of others. One of the toys, a wooden duck, was so realistic a family of motherless ducklings followed it home. Gelato loved the ducks like they were his own children. Oh, how he loved to teach them, and oh, how they loved to listen. He taught them about right and wrong, responsibility, honesty, and monopoly. Greg is fascinated with real estate. Cricket was glad Gelato was happier, even though ducks made him nervous. They eat caterpillars! Well, good thing you're a cricket. I have got to change my name. And so the ducklings listened closely as Gelato taught them everything they needed to know. Look at little Liliana as her mother shows her how to gather breakfast from a chicken or make milkshakes from a cow. Even Steven's struggling, Papa taught him when to take a bow. Wow. Nothing's missing cause they listen when their parents taught them how. A mother and a father know the ways to live life right. So listen little children and your days will turn out bright. Now you! <laughs> Wonderful! Helps your snoring. Gary, it's not polite to eat worms in bed. Good night, Greg. Sweet dreams, little ones. Prepare yourself for a long night, Cricket. All throughout the night, Gelato poured his love into this new and very special wood card.
he just winked at me. Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Oh, this is great! Hey, wait, come back! Come back! I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. You're not like the other toys, are you? Never heard of toys. I will call you Pistachio, after the wood from which you were made. Nobody made me. I'm out of here. Well, hold your horses, Pistachio. You're a part of the family now. I'm your father, Gelato. Never heard of a father. Why, a father is the one who'll teach you how to live. How to be happy. I don't need any lessons. I can find happiness without anybody's help. Oh, Pistachio, you need to listen to those who love you the most, your parents. Why should I listen to my parents? I want what's best for me. Because you are too young to know what is best for you, Pistachio. Trust me, I was a boy once too. Tomorrow, we'll take a field trip for your first lesson in life. But for now, we must sleep. Well, okay. I guess we can try it your way. For now. That's my log, uh, boy. Good night, Cricket. I am a caterpillar. Good night, Pistachio. You will see. Gelato is a good father. He has learned great things from his own father. And you will learn those things from him. If you will listen. Well, if I don't, I'm not hanging around a bunch of ducks. A team. What? It's not a bunch of ducks. It is a team of ducks. Like a gaggle of geese or a herd of cattle. Never heard of cattle. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. So Gelato took his ducklings and pistachio to the art museum, where he would use the paintings to teach a very important lesson. Just pictures? Boring. You'll see, Pistachio. There's nothing like art to help you find your way. Hey, Art! Aye! What's up, Gelato? Which way to the sheep paintings? Down and to the left, past the prodigal. Thanks, Art. <laughs> Gary, you should have gone before we left home. Here's what I really wanted to show you. Sheep! Never heard of sheep. It's a flock of sheep. You're thinking of cattle. It was the shepherd's job to take care of 100 sheep. One sheep ran away and got lost. Even though there were still 99 more, the shepherd left the 99 to go off into a storm in search of that one lost sheep. Why would he do that? Well, because he was a good shepherd and he loved all the sheep. He didn't want to lose a single one. Why did the little sheep run away? Nobody knows. Maybe a wolf dressed like a sheep talked him into it. Maybe he thought he could find something more fun than following his shepherd. Maybe he thought he knew best. By the time the shepherd found him, he was cold and miserable. He knew he should have listened to the shepherd. Some children act the same way. They foolishly think they know best, that they don't need to listen to their parents. Not me. I'm no fool, no sorry. Nicely put, Cricket. You should sit on my mouth and finish all of my stories. Moralizing runs very deep in my family. <laughs> I did love this game. <laughs> Pistachio his five pennies to buy the book, but made him promise to go straight there and then come right back. Oh, I promise! The moment he lied, something <laughs> strange happened to Pistachio's nose. But we'll get to that later. Hmm, growing boy. Okay, now, who can tell me the population of Luxembourg? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, cool! 
close, Greg, but you forgot the suburbs. Come young, come all to my pulpit, down the hole to the fun that you're not supposed to have. I'll do some impressions, but there won't be boring lessons like the ones that you get from your dad. As silly as a tickle, sorry tickets cost a nickel, a small price to pay to be glad. So come see my talents. Abandon your parents. It's fun and no strings attached. <gasps> no strings? Huh? <gasps> Amazing! A puppet with no strings! <laughs> if you were in the show, I'd be rich! Picture people paying golden coins to watch this little boy As he sings for them and dances as the world's first stringless toy It's so genius just between us, everyone will cry Encore! Boy, it's no time to be modest, for the world will soon applaud us Look at what you brought us, but So glum, chum. Oh, I probably shouldn't say. You already started saying. All you have to do is finish. Huh? What are you hiding behind your back? Um, my father, Gelato, was teaching me a lesson and gave me five pennies to buy a book, but instead of a book, I bought a ticket to a puppet show where this scary guy was singing and chasing me. Weird. And we fell into some coats where I found these. <laughs> I don't know who they are. Why, they're yours, of course. Huh? Finders keepers. This lesson teaching father of yours will be so proud that you have turned five pennies into five golden coins. But I didn't. Hush, child, you're ruining the moment. Okay, everybody bundled up. They've got feathers. So that's a yes. Where'd Pistachio run off to? Are you coming, Pistachio? Coming, father. All right then. Let's head out! It takes a clever boy to turn pennies into gold coins. Clever enough for our opportunity. Opportunity? What would you say if I told you there was a way to turn your five golden coins into hundreds? Well, I was really supposed to buy a book with this, so me and the ducks could learn more about art. Oh, ducks know everything there is to know about art. That's a fact. Indeed. And what's the purpose of an education other than to teach you how to go out into the world and make money? And here's your opportunity. The Waterfront Carnival! It'll be such fun! And won't your father be impressed when you show him you are such a clever boy? All right, let's do it! Wow, this is way better than art! And here we are! One gold coin to play! Calling all clever children! Win, win, win! At the Wheel of Moolah! What's Moolah? More money than you could possibly count! I don't know how to count. Ah, see how honest I am! How does it work? Simple. You give me a gold coin and spin the wheel. Wherever it stops, you multiply your money that many times. Wow, so the worst that could happen is I get my gold coin back. That's not really your thing, is it? Spin away! Come on, Big Ten! Zero. 
zero? Whoops, huh? that almost never happens. Oh, you lose. Looks like this one's mine. Who's? That wasn't supposed to happen. Aw, I'm sure you'll win it back in the next game. Really? Of course. Why would we steal you wrong? Field trips always make me hungry. Who wants a corn dog? <laughs> One, two, three, uh, uh oh, uh, gelato? Hey, one of my ducklings is missing. You mean pistachio? <gasps> pistachio? What happened to pistachio? I have no idea. But it is not that bad. You still have got three other ducklings. Ah, Big caterpillar. Remember the painting of the lost sheep? Like any good shepherd, I love all my children the same. That means you and pistachio too. I won't rest until we're all home, no matter what. Better make that corn dog to go. And now it's time for obscure Broadway show tunes with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings an obscure Broadway show tune. Without further ado, from the unknown musical Office Supplies, the heart-rending love song, Where Have All the Staplers Gone? We don't have much time before the big meeting. No. No, we don't. Have you seen the scissors, miss? They're in the bottom drawer. I tried that drawer, but they're there no more. That's odd. I know I thought for sure. Have you seen the masking tape? It's right next to the phone. Oh, that's what I thought, but now it's not. I guess I should have known oh, Where have all the staplers gone? What happened to our paper clips? The ballpoint pens are gone again They're gone again The sticky pads have lost their stick Do you remember when? Again? I give up. 
I think it's probably best to just go home. Wait! You still have three gold coins! But... You're on your own. You can't give up. There's three more coins. There's better luck. You return to your father empty handed. You'll only disappoint and then be reprimanded. You must show.
Do you want question two? Question two! Question two! All righty then. For a hundred gold coins, here is question number two. In the story of the lost sheep, why did the shepherd leave the 99 to go off and search for the one lost sheep? I can't believe it. I know this one too. Because he was a good shepherd, and he loved all his sheep. Hmm? Correct. You, you've you just won a hundred gold coins. <laughs> of course, question three is worth a thousand. A thousand? Yes, yes, question three. Where did we get these questions? He knows them. Yes, I know them because Gelato... Who? My father! Pistachio had a choice to make. He knew that telling the truth was the right thing to do. But if he did, the blueberry would know that Pistachio was the reason Gelato was lost. So, he lied. Uh, my father is a fisherman, and we were out catching the largest fish you've ever seen. Remember what happened the first time Pistachio lied? <laughs> oh! <gasps> Is that really why your father was out at sea? Um, yep. That's the whole truth. <laughs> What's happening? What am I going to do? I can't go through like, like this. I'll get used for a coat rack. <laughs> How do I get my nose back to normal? You must listen to your father, Pistachio. What? How do you know my name? Gelato loves you, and he wants what is best for you. You must learn from his teaching or you will never be happy. Well, if you know so much about me, why don't you just tell me what I should do next? You know what you should do. Listen to your father. Tell the truth. Well, I must go. A good friend needs my help. Au revoir. Don't give up hope. I know, if I can find 
Angelotto's workshop, maybe that cricket won't know what to do. This is crazy! My nose keeps throwing me off balance! Hey, what do you do? I'm walking here! Sorry! Oh, for crying out loud! Why well, hey there, Cricket! I am not a Cricket! I am a Caterpillar! Silly Cricket! Huh? Cricket? I am not a Pistachio! You are alive! I'm looking for Gelato! Me too! That is why I left home all by myself in this big, mean, Caterpillar-eating world! I don't eat Caterpillars! Good! I hear we are quite tasty! Who's with the ducklings? Oh, a good friend is helping me out. No, I'm a blueberry, but I get that all the time. <coughs> no, I've never played Monopoly, but I'll give it a go. What is this story with your smeller? My what? Your nose! It looks like a sapling! Oh, it's a long story. Not as long as that hunker sticking out of your face! Cricket, gelato is lost and it's all my fault! Smiling. Gelato would be very pleased. What? Why? Because you are doing what he said. I told you to take responsibility for your mistakes. That means you listened. He would be so proud of you right now. Oh, goody goody gum drops. Where are you taking us now, Horsey? Horsey? No, Horsey. Oh, dear. Whoa! <laughs> We are floating! We are sinking! This couldn't get any worse! Deja Vu just isn't strong enough! Where are we? We are inside a big fish! And we're still alive? Oh, you can stay alive inside a fish for two or three days. Trust me, I know. Help me look for some angels. Wait, I hear something. It sounds like... music. That does not sound like angel music. It sounds... Italian! We should have listened to what Mama told us When it was bedtime she'd cuddle and hold us And say, boys, please remember your poor Uncle Clark Never take meatballs to see after dark They look a little like tomato Yeah, I'd say more Brando or De Niro have found Gelato's long-lost brothers! Mamma mia! A sorry old uncle set out with the meatball Rolling the stormy seas just after nightfall And so he discovered this fact so infernal Great fish that love meatballs are also nocturnal But we didn't listen for pride or for spite we set out a rowing with meatballs at night And just like our uncle, oh God rest his soul For want of a meatballs, a fish ate us whole It makes me miss my father even more Don't you get me crying so, so children, please listen to your dads and mamas As they tuck you in, in your footy pajamas 
Their wisdom will save you from trouble, no question. A waking up inside a fishy's intestine. We're sorry, Mama, that we didn't listen. Our hearts are now heavy, our faces they glisten. With tears of regret for our pride and our spite. And that we took meatballs to see in the night. Gelato! What, huh? Who said my name? Father? Pistachio? Father! Pistachio! Cricket! Your nose! Oh, Dad, I spent the five cents and I went and I tried to win more money than I lost and I almost drowned and then I lied and I almost crashed because there was no horsey till I got eaten by this fish. All true. I am so, 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 so sorry. It's okay, Pistachio. Who's with the ducklings? They're in good hands. <laughs> Oh, the park place with the hotel. That's fifteen hundred dollars, please. <laughs> I prayed that I would find you again someday. So did I. Hey, we're starving here. Let's eat. Oh, I almost forgot. Pistachio, Cricket, these are my brothers. How have you stayed alive all these years? Ah, uh, this fish. It swallowed a delivery boat filled with meatballs. He loves eating Italian. Including us. Uh, it's not so bad, really. While we try to get home, we eat and we sing. And sing and eat. You know what I'm saying? I bet you do. I bet you know what I'm saying. And we got loads of oil for the lamps. Keeps the mood lighting going, you know? Hmm. We gotta do something about that nose. That's why I always say, never leave home without your tools. I have never heard you say that. I always say it starting now. Whoa. more for your life than this. I wanted zoo trips and juggling lessons and... Hey, we could always eat the castor oil. What are you, nuts? Castor oil makes you throw up. Forget about it. At that moment, Pistachio had an idea that could save them all. Hey, everybody, if we could open and dump all these barrels of castor oil, then maybe the fish will throw up. Quick, roll all the barrels down here where my father's tools are. Wait. The crow's nest. If we drop the barrels from that height, they'll break and splash all over his stomach. I don't know. I think the barrels are too strong to break. Pistachio. Dad, I know wood. I am wood. Yes, but I made you. Trust me. It was the moment of truth. Pistachio had to choose between what he thought was best and what his father knew was best. Okay, Dad. He chose wisely. And he listened. Here we go! Hey, it's not working. I really thought it would work. And now we got no food and just a little oil in the lamp. Oh, oh, great. See that? Now we're in the dark. Wow. Someone's really hungry. Was that your stomach, Espresso? That was not my stomach. Hey, Dorito. Hey, it wasn't me. Wait, could that be? Here we go! Somebody pick up the cricket! I thought you were a caterpillar! Whatever! Hold me! <laughs> that was disgusting! 
I smell like linguine with clam sauce. Hey, and meatballs. Good thinking, Pistachio. You're a great listener. Thanks, Dad. Well, now what do we do? We are in the middle of the ocean. Still got your tools? Always. Let's build a raft. We can use the canvas for a sail. Just tell me what to do, Dad. I promise I'll listen closely. Look at this guy. Ah, hey, what a bright boy. So instead of Pistachio getting his own way, he got something even better. He became part of a real family. And it was all because he listened to his father. Wow, Dad. I love it. It's from the museum gift shop. Happy birthday, Pistachio. And so Gelato, Pistachio, all his brother ducklings, and Cricket... Caterpillar! You are my hero. ...lived happily ever after. A mother and a father know the ways to live life right. So listen, little children, and your days will turn out bright. So listen, little children, and your life will turn out Our next entry in the Greensburg Talent Show is a family band. They've got a swinging song, and I think they're gonna go places. Give a big hand to the Veggie Tones. Hi. Oh, come on, kids. Okay, Robbie, go ahead. Another gig? A paying gig? I gotta show you love. Well, hey, mister. What the fella gotta do to get a test drive around here? The song's called I Gotta Show You Love. something in you they can't see. You're up around the edges, baby, I agree. But he's telling me from up above, I gotta show you love. These guys are gonna be huge. The voice of an angel, Mirabelle. Cause baby, God sees something in you they can't see. You rough around the edges, baby, I agree. But he's telling me from up above. I'm the proud papa, Larry Dill.
your till. Great show tonight. Here's your check for the gig, $500. Oh, thank goodness. We sure could use and this. And here's the bill for the new stage, mm -hmm. the extra lights, and all the food you ate, $494. That's almost, uh... Not including tip. Why don't you just keep this? Careful loading up, boys. Those are new instruments. <clears throat> Evening, ladies. Dacus Kuroda, Daily Fish Wrap. You veggie tones are sure on the rise. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We're very excited. It'll be great for, you know, the exposure and stuff. Your song on the radio is sure catchy. The crowd loved it tonight. Maxim Dedicate! <laughs> Thanks very much. It's, you know, it's really re rewarding to be able oh, excuse us. Um, here you go, guys. That should be the last of it. Thanks, Beer Bell. Whoa, little lady. Surely you don't have to haul your own gear, do you? I know. I just thought the boys could use a hand. Talented and a heart of gold. Ugh, Mirabelle. Goody two shoes. Let's go, Veggie Tones. Everybody on the bus. I got big news. What's up, Paul? I just got a call backstage. We've been invited to play Vegetable Square Garden. <laughs> What's that? It's Vegetable Square Garden, the venue that launched some of the biggest bands around. Bands like the Groovy Brothers, the Potatones, and the Yam Yam Yams. We got a long way to go and only a few days to get there, so sit tight. We're gonna drive straight on through. It's supposed to snow pretty hard tonight, Pop. You sure you want to drive? Are you kidding? We're not missing this for anything. Let's rock and roll. Ugly shorts, remember? Are you some kind of singing group? Not just some singing group. They're the one and only Veggie Tones. Uh, this is our cook. We call him Cook. Easy to remember. It's a family name. I can't believe the Veggie Tones are here in our little chalet. What an honor. I'm your biggest fan. That's totally cool. I have all your albums. We only have one album. And I have it. You know, we give autographs for hot food. <laughs> well, we don't get many travelers these days. I can't imagine why. Oh, be nice. The veggie tones, eh? I'm sure that superstars like yourselves will want a whole floor of executive suites. You bet. We're a very close family. Maybe just one suite. Oh. Just one? And it doesn't have to be a suite. It can be not so sweet. Just a room, then? We're down to earth, you know. Want to keep in touch with the common man. And keep in touch with our last ten dollars. Ah, uh, you are in the same family? The kids take after their mother. 
We're from France. The south of France. How about a little dinner while you wait? Feast your eyes. Then feast the rest of your body. This looks fantastic. Thank you. Ah, uh, just a little something I whipped up on short notice. Want a few more rules? No thanks. Spending money on the road can be a slippery slope. <coughs> Speaking of slippery slopes, that bus of yours wasn't expensive, was it? Why? Do you want me to park it somewhere else? Oh no! It, it, it just parked itself uh, down the hill. Huh? Way down the hill. At the bottom. I'll uh, go get your key. This gets worse and worse. Cheer up. You haven't had dessert yet. Here, Daddy, have one of these chocolate roses. Oh, no. Not the chocolate roses. Thank you. This looks lovely. Anything but the chocolate roses. Those are forbidden. Say what? Eat my roses? Eat my roses? Who do you think you are to dare and eat my favorite dessert? My one and only guilty pleasure made for me and me alone. How dare you? We didn't know, sir. Ugh, what a beast. It's Beat. Finnegan J. Beat the third is the name. I'm so sorry, Mr. Beat. We can make this right. <laughs> sir, these are paying guests. They're here to rent a, a room. <laughs> you remember rooms? Well, one room. Well, oh, this just keeps getting better and better. One room, seven guests. <laughs> what kind of cheapskate freeloaders are you? The kind who love free food. Newsflash, this food ain't free. You can pay for this meal and then kindly throw yourselves out. Thank you. <laughs> we offered them a complimentary meal, sir. We could use the guests. Did I ask for your opinion? Uh, no, but if ever you did, sir, I'd suggest a little mouthwash. Noted. Now, what are you going to do to pay for all of this? I can play bass solo. What? <laughs> We might as well work this out. Their bus is, um, a bit out of commission. <laughs> and the road out of the valley won't be cleared for a long time. There must be some way we can stay here and pay you back. Sure, we can earn our keep. Surely a top-notch hotel like this needs a little entertainment. We've already got a dinner show. <laughs> Ta-da! Hey, smart guy, get back into my rabbit stew. <laughs> My name's not Stu, it's Harvey! Nobody sings for their supper here. If you're gonna work off your bill, there are plenty of chores to be done. Well, what can you do to repay me? We can wash dishes. What? We can clean, mop the floors, make all the beds. We can? We can. We can do anything you require to repay you for your hospitality. And I'm sincerely sorry that we ate your chocolate rose. It looks so delicious, we simply could not help ourselves. We had no idea it was special to you, sir. Huh. I'll show you to your room. Yes, here we are. <gasps> I call the man. Me too. The exalted throne. Will there be anything else, sir? I call the bathtub. <sighs> Seven people, one room. Musician. Oh, don't worry, Daddy. This won't last forever. It'll be okay. Mm. Worst tour ever. <sighs> 6 a.m. Bound out of bed. Time to start a brand new day Up with the sun, much to be done Take a moment to pray Thank you for all my blessings Come from a place of love Even for a certain, basely someone that I'm thinking of
It's what God wants me to do. It's who God wants me to be. It's as simple as that. He wants me to do it. And even though it's hard, he'll help me through it. Fill up my heart with love and share it generously. Because that's the person God wants me to be. You think loving the unlovable's a bit of an uphill climb? And try building an ark or parting the Red Sea sometime. Yes, Beat is a bully, but what might he do if I were to show him kindness? Maybe there's hope if I were to help him from his disinclinedness. Fill up my heart with love, share it generously, because indisputably, irrefutably, that's the person God wants me to be. Guys and shine, veggie tones. We've got work to do. Mm. Up and at them. <sighs> Five more minutes. We got a big day ahead of us. Lots of cleaning, <laughs> lots of fun. She's wet or enthusiastic in the morning. Morning, Daddy. Time to get up. We've got a motel to clean. Uh, I gotta come up with a plan to get us out of here. Well, my usual table. Of course, Mr. McNeil, you're my favorite guest. I'm your only guest. Oh, not anymore. We just had a family come through here. Root beer? Through here. I don't want root beer. I'll have some sweet tea and a side of fries and a quiche. I love a good quiche. All right, I'll give you a nice quiche. Hands off, Romeo. Nobody's kissing anybody. Hey. When's the next floor show? You said you are gonna get some new razzle-dazzle around here. I don't want to see the magic act up here again. Because his show was lame, lame, lame. Paperback puppets. I'm not going up there. You can't make me. You do what it takes to keep the guests happy. I have enough magic to do in the kitchen, thank you. And you have world-class entertainers right under your nose. Those freeloaders? Oh, give them a shot, boss. You'll see. They're fantastic. I'm serious. You bring out that old magic act again, and I'm chicken out for good. So, you people can sing? You bet. Just like little birds. Nice. Then get up there and show me what you got. You make that guy smile. Lame! And I'll let you work off some of your bill by performing. Yes, sir. I'll round up the kids. We were inseparable, except when we were apart. song? Huh, not bad. Not bad at all. Well, what'd you think? Fine. Consider the nightly dinner show one of your chores. One of your chores. Now get back to the rest of them. Everything all right here at the front desk? Ship shape, Manuel. Just finishing a few plans for tomorrow. Welcome to Beats Alpine Sweets. May we help you, good people? We're here to see the awesome show. Yeah, we're pumped, man. Well, you've come to the right place. Right this way. How exactly did you guys get here in a blizzard? We came on skis. And you're gonna get out of here on skis? Of course. <gasps> skis. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, she's doing something with the plates. Is this part of the show? No, just part of the job. Mr. B, it's dinner. Leave it by the door. Here it is. Don't let it get cold. Wow, that's quite a collection. Those records are private, thank you. And that's the way I like it. This seems like a nice spot to listen to music. A private place. Yes, it is. I had no idea you were an opera lover. No one does. Do you know what the definition of private is? It looks like you have some songbooks on the shelf. Do you ever sing? No, of course not. I just listen. Music, it, um, well, it calms me down. It helps me forget about a lot of things. The sort of thing. Please leave. This is none of your business. I love singing. You should try it sometime. Who would want to hear that? I'm a cranky old grump with a nasty voice. Now, good day, Missy. It's Mirabelle. Maybe I could teach you to sing. Well, I didn't say I wanted... Of course, music lessons. That's another way I can pay for the room. We could start tomorrow. No, there will be no lessons, and there will be no singing. Now, good day to you, and get out! I have dinner waiting. You think about it. I will do nothing of the sort. You're thinking about it right now. I am not! Yeah, he's thinking about it. What? Okay, surely Manuel has something that can help get us out of here. <gasps> Rockets! <laughs> nah, that won't work either. Ugh, this place is so dreary. I know. What if you had to live here? Ew! Ew. What a disgrace. Just look at this place. Mired in the darkness and gloom. I say out with the dreary and in with the cheery. Let's fix up and brighten. And honey, I got them. This were my home. I'd greet every patron with a friendly smile. Serve them a fiesta with flair and style. Let them see we always go the extra mile. If this were my home. If this were my home. If this were my home. Yep, our work here is done. I'm going to bed. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. We join Larry as he recounts the amazing tale of his family's invention of macaroni and cheese. It's true. I will explain it to you. Azoli and opera. Great 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 Cheesy gorgonzola. Oh, it's smelly. But I still want some in my belly. That's because we like our food extremely cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met my son at 
macaroni makes a mean a macaroni. My Maria makes a charming tossy cheese. Someday she'll meet a man who comes from her own clan. No son of mine will ever marry a cumbersome. I still forget how many greats, though their families were enemies. Maria and Tony liked each other. <gasps> it's his fault! Her fault! Your fault! No, it's their fault. The families were having a fit. Maria and Tony were tasting it. It's incredibly delightful. There's a piece on your lips. We, we shouldn't should miss this biteful. Ah. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Ugh, this is my grandparents. Nothing to see here. Let's just skip to the end. That's how my great 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 But they brought together the family. Brought together the family. And invented macaroni and cheese. The cheese and macaroni. It's a macaroni and cheese. It's, it's great, 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 great. This has been Silly Songs with Ben. Tune in next time to hear Antonio say. It's a great. What? Who's wallpapering without my permission? They're not. They're all ready to hop with Ben. Good. Then get out of my sight. <laughs> good morning, sir. Not much good about it. Get back in the kitchen. It's almost lunchtime. Get the buffet out here. Yes, sir. Mr. Bate, have you thought any more about those singing lessons? <laughs> Where are all my pots and pans? We need them for cover. For cover? From the food fight! Ah! 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 <gasps> Whoa! Never start a food fight with a chef, boys. This alone, is she? Just one lesson. Not interested. <laughs> All right, maybe a half lesson. Really? Oh, good. That's wonderful. We'll start. To <laughs> I warned you. It. It wasn't so bad. Everyone has to start somewhere. Is anyone hurt? In pain? I heard screaming! <laughs> We're fine, Manuel. Mr. Beat just needs to warm up his pipes. My pipes sound like they need a plumber. Just repeat after me. When the time is right, you got
don't even know how that happened. I'll see you tomorrow. No one can know about this. As you wish. That went well. Brave girl. Gotta find something to get us out of here. What's this? Uh-uh. What, what's in here? the snow melts. Yeah. And then she'll be gone. She? Uh, they. They'll be gone. You know, all of them. You know, you could make them an offer to stay permanently. Oh, no, no. This is a good investment. That's all. They're renovating the hotel. They're renovating you. Admit it. Nonsense. The snow is melting soon. That'll be the end of it. I guess it will be, sir. I tell you, Mirabelle, I'm about ready to give that beat a piece of my mind. I mean, who does he think he is? Yeah, he's pretty grumpy. He's so scowly and ugly and mean. He must be unhappy. I'm the one that's unhappy, Mirabelle. Maybe Mr. Beat just never had anyone show him any kindness. I can see why. Sometimes the best thing to do for someone like that is to show them love. <laughs> who would do that? God would. What? God would do that, Katrina. Trade you. Deal. You can listen to her talk about how much she loves the beat. Ew. Don't make me ill. Come on, Mirabelle. You can't love someone who doesn't love you back. Especially that old grump. Katrina, we can all be nasty sometimes, but everyone deserves to be loved. Psh. Totally ridiculous. Ow! Good morning. Well, good morning, Mirabelle. Any new songs today? Well, we've got some for the show tonight, but I thought you might want to join us. What? Oh, no, I, d d don't be silly. You've been doing so well with your lessons. Think of how surprised the guests would be. It might bring you more customers. Or scare them away. Look, this place doesn't need any more bad publicity, believe me. We got plenty of that from Madame Shallow. You mean the travel critic? She really gave you a horrible review. I mean, really, one star? One star! You give one star to a truck stop motel, to a dump! You wanna talk about it? I'm here to listen. No, now just go away. <sighs> okay, but I'm here if you need me. Stop being so sweet! I mean, everyone knows it, and that's why I get one star. Don't you get it? Yes, you are me. You're nasty, impatient, and you push everyone away. Then why are you so nice to me? Because I'm not perfect either. But God loves me anyway. I'm just showing you that same love too. There'll be no more singing from me tonight. And I think I've had enough music lessons. Mirabelle? Manuel, what happened to this place? Why did Madame Chalot give it such a poor review? Ah, yes. Um, come with me. There was a terrible blizzard that year. She showed up out of nowhere, said she was lost, and Mr. Beat turned her away. 
Well, I can't take you in with no money. I promise. I promise I can pay you back. No money, no room. Now get out. Please? Just for tonight? Uh, it's so cold out here. I don't run a shelter for penniless vagrants. Go bother someone else. Where will I go? I don't care. Madame Shalo? Yes, but she wasn't the Madame Shalo. Not yet, anyway. It was that incident that made her write her first, and to this day, harshest review of any hotel. That's right, weary travelers, it's me, Madame Shalot. I'm here at the Beats Alpine Suites, an inn whose owner was rude to me. So rude, in fact, that I'm afraid I'm going to have to give this establishment a one-star review. <laughs> I cannot say it too strongly. Avoid this awful place. Wow. I know, right? Mirabelle, Pop's got big news. Come quickly. I've invented snowshoes. <gasps> what is that on top? I don't have any idea. But these little babies will walk right on top of snowdrifts, right through that mountain pass, and out the valley. Pack your bags. <laughs> We're back on tour. What's all the hullabaloo? I found the way to get us out of here. Well, that certainly is good news. Happy day. Kids, it's time to get ready for our farewell show, because we're leaving in the morning. After Vegetable Square Gardens, what then? Thinking after that, in the next, in the next. Mirabelle, I would like to apologize for my behavior earlier. And if you are still willing, I would like to resume the singing lessons. I'm sorry, Finnegan, but Daddy's figured out a way for us to leave. We're leaving first thing in the morning. Excuse me, I have to get ready for the show tonight. You'll need a hand with the plates tonight? No, that's okay. I need to get used to working the kitchen by myself again. Just me, all alone. Okie dokie. Somebody better give me a key, and quick, a big fat key. <laughs> what? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, grapes and gourds, I'm, I'm proud to present our dinner entertainment. Sadly, giving their final performance of the evening. Please enjoy the final show from those wonderful singing sensations, the Veggie Tones. They say you are hard to love, that you are unworthy. Kindness and sympathy But I see it differently I'm not afraid to show The love I've been given so I will be strong I'll sing my song
need your equipment. Nope. The venue's going to set us up with everything we need, so long as we get there on time. Thanks for everything. Sorry about Mr. Beat not coming to see you leave. That's okay. We'll send for our stuff in a few days. Mirabelle? Mirabelle? Coming, Daddy. Glad to finally be rid of that place. Yeah, yeah. At least it has better wallpaper now. On to bigger and better things. Why do I miss those pot pies from Kirk? Whoa. Make sure you're rolling all the time, but stay hidden! What about you? I'll be in disguise, of course! <gasps> Madam Shalom. It's the only way to catch this guy. What do you think she's it's doing here? So but what about the rave reviews? They said the dinner show is fantastic. Just because someone books a great band doesn't mean they deserve a better rating on my show. But we'll see. Either they impress me, or I might just have to invent the half-star review. Wow, Beat is going to get a second chance at a good review. If he doesn't blow it again. Come on, gang. I want to make this gig. Vegetable Square Garden, here we come. My weary travelers, welcome to another edition of Hotel Undercover, the show where we catch horrible hotels being horrible. This particular chalet has got my worst rating ever. I have heard that they have had a comeback of sorts. Let's see, shall we? Welcome to Beats Alpine Suites. May I help you? Forgive me, but I have no money from my long journey. I need to stay the night and play later, yes? I'm sure we can work something out. Everyone is welcome here. Please come in. So friendly. I hope that we live up to your expectations, ma'am. My, my. What a table you set. All for our guests. I just try to serve food that would make people want to stay forever. How can we leave the chalet like this? Easy, in these snowshoes, one hop at a time. Dad, Pete really needs his best foot forward right now to get his reputation back and save his hotel. We know our show could really help him do that. It's not our problem. But if we can help him, shouldn't we? Why go back for the beat? He's been nothing but mean to us. Yeah, what's in it for us? Nothing. We don't love to get something in return or to get love back. We love because God loves us all whether we deserve it or not. We are made to love one another. It doesn't matter how Mr. Beat treated us or if he deserves it. We need to show him love anyway. But Vegetable Square Garden. We have to go back, Daddy. Come on, family. We've got an encore performance to get to. Mwah. Why, thank you. I hear you put on quite a dinner show here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we do. They're warming up right now. Excuse me. And then I say, the last ingredient is magic. And I pour the chicken out of the pot. Then you come out juggling silverware. Me? I don't juggle silverware. Well, chop chop, you've got ten whole minutes to learn. Oh, this is preposterous. We're not entertainers. This is gonna be worse than watching an empty stage. <gasps> Mr. Beat, it's them! It's who? The Veggie Tones. They're coming back. I don't know why, but they're coming back. <laughs> Looks like we won't have to perform after all. Oh, well, then. The Veggie Tones are coming back! <laughs> veggie Tones? Tones are on their way! <laughs> Avalanche!
doing? You're crazy! Keep the home fires hot, fellas. I got me a family to save. driving the snowmobile. Uh, no. I didn't deserve it, but you've been kind to me. Even though I was so rude to you, to your family. I, I don't know how, but... Uh, you are welcome, Finnegan. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me. Excuse me. This is Madame Chalot, on location at the Peaks Alpine Suites. I'm standing here with Manuel, the maitre d'. Tell me, Manuel, what do you think of working for a bona fide hero? Am I on television? There's some who are hard.
Hi, Dad. Not now, Darby. Miss Poopsie is thirsty. But I... Here, Miss Poopsie, drink up. Don't get jealous, Francine. You're next. How's the floss? It's almost ripe. Great. Hey, have you seen my dad? I want to show him. Now, Daddy, I gotta get old Bessie ready to bring in the floss. We're gonna have a bump of crap <laughs> if we can bring it in on time. And don't forget to check on that old bathroom. Dad, Dad! Oh, Darby, what is it? Look at this, Dad. The land of Haas? Yeah, it's an amusement park that Bobby Bernard went to when he visited his cousins last week. Bobby said that they had this roller coaster that goes upside down and even. Wow, that sounds like quite a place. But it's very far away. I'm afraid we just don't have the money this no, year to... No, I've got it all figured out, Dad. we got the piggy bank, right? You said the money you're putting in it is for me. Now, son, that's for your college, for your future. I don't want you throwing it away on... It's not fair. Hey, come give me a hand. You said it was my money. It's ready! The floss is ready! <laughs> we, we can pick it now, I think! Fire up old Bessie! The floss is ready! Oh, oh, Alright! <laughs> Can... can you fix it? They don't even make parts for her anymore. What about the floss? We'll have to bring it in by hand. But that'll take too long. Twelve hour days. Every hand we got. But... the land of Hans. Darby, son, I'm sorry. Maybe next year. The bouncy thingy. I'm sorry, Darby, but we're farmers. The crops have to come first. It's not fair. Why don't I get to do what I want to do? I'm done with this lousy farm. It's been a long day. Go home to your families. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Pick the floss, pick the floss. Man, I never get to do anything I want to do. I know what you're thinking. You're wishing you could be somewhere else. Somewhere over the rainbow. I was just like you once. I wanted to go... Over the rainbow? How would I go over a rainbow? It's water droplets refracting sunlight. Well, I just meant... Uh... No, the place I want to go is beyond the barn. Come again? Beyond the barn. Across Kansas. And all the way to the land of Haas. Right. Well... Remember how much your dad loves you, Darby. You really are a lucky kid. How can I be lucky if I'm missing out on all the fun? Life should be a party, but the hot dog's falling from my bun. Somewhere beyond the barn, far from lousy farm I'll find my happiness I'll do what I like best somewhere beyond the barn Change the wind I told you your dad wouldn't let you go. He will too let me go. Just not this year. Because of the floss. Of course not. He don't want you to have fun. That's not true. He loves me very much. Listen, kid. Love has its limit. Do what you want to do. Do something he don't like. 
then see how far his love goes. It's now or never, Pipsqueak. Get wise, get some money, and go have some fun. <laughs> Of the munchies, and you are in Munchieland. Munchieland? Me? Care for a snack? No, thank you. The munchies think you fell from heaven in your shiny hut. But I know the truth. It is a starship that brought you across the galaxy to save these sweet ones from the evil munchie muncher. A, a star what? The munchie who? But now you and your starship have destroyed it, and you are their hero. Ma'am, it's not a starship. It's an old trailer. Yes, love. Come out, little munchies, and meet the brave sailor who sailed across the stars in his rocket ship trailer. It's just a plain old trailer. We crossed the white sky, past the moon by the butcher to oh, save my friends from that nasty old muncher. We thank you, sir. We thank you, sir. For saving our good friends. Who would have met the most unpleasant... Most unpleasant end! Had you not happened by in your trailer from the sky! A song about your exploits will be penned! That means written. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your name? Darby. Darby. Can you think of anything that rhymes with Darby? Uh, Ferby? Got any other names? Uh, 
Nope. Just Darby. <sighs> we'll make the most of it. His name is Darby. And he's our hero. Yeah, I like my Barbie. But I'm no weirdo. Oh. Like Dana Carvey. <laughs> Robert De Niro. His name is Darby. And he's our hero. His name is Darby. And he's our hero. I like my Barbie. But I'm no weirdo. Like Dana Carvey. Robert De Niro. His name is Darby. And he's our hero. Cross him on the sky and poke him on chair in the eye. So lift him up and cross him high. Like a fan, Darby. Who destroyed my munchy muncher? Huh? Who was it? He sent the cross him on the sky and poke him on chair in the eye. So lift him up and toss him high. I got the band. Darby's a man. Oh, it was you, was it? Do I know you? You're gonna pay for this, and your little dog too. <laughs> and end up with the smoke. Oh, you have nothing to worry about. If he shows up again, you can just drop your starship on him. Right. In the meantime, are you hungry? We've got grease balls, cheese meats, two nuts. Thanks, but I'm not very hungry. You see, I'm trying to get here. Ah. Land of Oz, delightful. Do you know how to get there? Oh yes, you need yellow. Yellow? Mm -hmm. Let's see if he's home. Yellow. Uh, yellow. Yellow. Yes, Yellow McToad. He's very old, but he will lead you to the land of hearts. So, all I have to do is... Follow old Yellow McToad! Follow old Yellow McToad! Follow old Yellow McToad! <laughs>